and welcome to another episode of Earth 911, Sustainability in Your Ear. Mitch Ratcliffe, and we are back with another innovator interview. This time we're going to be talking with Doug Heskey. He's the CEO of New Day Impact Investing. He's back to talk with us about the ins and outs of sustainable and socially responsible investing. Doug's also walked us through the basics of investing for lower greenhouse gas emissions on previous shows, renewable energy, and how the recent United Nations Climate Change Conference, or COP26, changed the prospects for ESG investing. Today, we're going to look at clean water, keeping water clean, recycling water, and treating and reusing wastewater. New Day Impact offers a wide range of managed portfolios that take the trouble out of your decision making and offers, in particular, a clean water uh, fund that you can invest in. But today we're going to talk about some individual stocks. Evoqua Water Technologies, that's uh, ticker symbol AQUA, Watts Water Technologies Incorporated, WTS is the ticker symbol, Middlesex Water Company, uh, uh, which is MSEX. And uh, Waters Corporation, W-A-T. Finally, we're going to close out with Crystal Clean, which is trades under the symbol H-C-C-I. Now, please do your own research before doing any investing. Uh, we're talking about these uh, stocks, but there is a lot of complexity involved in any decision. Welcome to the show, Doug. How are you today? I am great, Mitch. Uh, great to speak with you again. Well, it's good to have you back. And, and by the way, if you want to tra- follow along on New Day Impact Investing, check out NewDayImpact.com. Uh, so, you know, just before we uh, started this uh, conversation, McKinsey released a new report, U.S. Water Infrastructure, Making Funding Count. And they called out some really important things that I wanted to just list out here and then ask you for your impression about. They say that today, 14 to 18 percent of the total daily water potable water in the United States is lost to leaks and that we're going to have to replace uh, 20,000 miles of pipe per year by 2035. And we're only replacing between four and 5,000 miles of pipe today. And in, 19, in 2020, we were $40 billion short. So this is the question, Doug. Um, how should we be thinking about investing in water utilities, which is a largely local uh, business model, to achieve these global changes that we want in efficiency and conservation. What's the right way to think about clean water investing is the simple question. Mitch, uh, that's a great question. And I've been reflecting a lot as we have as an organization on water issues, because we are right in the middle of not a pending drought, but we're right in the middle of one. And this may be a very long one as well. I have really been looking forward to this conversation. When I historically thought about water stocks, I thought boring, but as we will discuss today, there are some really cool things that are going on in this space. Not only are they cool, but the technologies being used by some are really important to the future of humanity. What we know for sure is that the scope of the water business, how we access water, how we use water, how we pay for it, and how it's regulated is going to change dramatically over the coming decade. And as with many other scarce resources, collaboration is going to be really important, especially between industrial and consumers and water producers like utilities. Mm -hmm. So companies are gonna need to collaborate with their uh, municipal water utilities to develop more ways to reduce or recycle water. And there's a great example of this right in our own backyard in the San Francisco Bay Area with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission and Anchor Brewing Company. Anchor, by working with SFPUC, has developed this super innovative water reuse program that will significantly change, reduce water usage while having the capacity to recycle 20 million gallons of water annually. This is gonna be the largest commercial water use project in the history of San Francisco, which is super exciting. And not only is this a collaboration around supporting um, the installation and things like that, given the SFPUC's uh, focus, but they've provided a million dollar grant to Anchor to help them install the system, mm-hmm. which is actually made by a private organization by the name of Cambrian. Now, there are 147,000 public water utilities in the United States, which seems almost impossible. And what 
uh, the 2015 Drinking Water Infrastructure Needs Survey assessment found is that we need $472.6 billion of investment by 2035 to continue, just to continue providing clean, safe drinking water. Do you see that capital starting to flow? Yeah, okay, that's a massive amount of money, of course. And the great answer is, is that, yes, the capital is flowing. The latest infrastructure bill now includes $111 billion in funding for clean and safe drinking water infrastructure right here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But this is only a drop in the bucket for what's needed to support what is a broad range of needs to develop new products and services that include improving the productivity of water treatment and distribution of water intensive industrial and power processes and for efficient water usage in ag. But already municipal utilities, private utilities and a lot of large businesses are spending a ton of money right now each year uh, for human consumption needs and industrial activity and also with reference to transportation of water through pump, pumps and pipes and mm -hmm. treatment plants and things like that. So, you know, this is an infrastructure problem of the greatest need. You look at Flint, Michigan, and, you know, the circumstances that we've had, not just there, but in other cities, this is something that has to be addressed immediately from a health and human services perspective. So before we jump into the, the conversation about specific companies, I, I, this is the last question that I, I've been dwelling on as I prepared for this conversation. This doesn't, because of the infrastructure and capital investments required to enter the business that you just described a moment ago, doesn't look like an industry that's going to be disrupted by anybody. Is this something where investors should be looking for established companies that have plenty of connections or could a startup be successful in this space? I think that there are going to be opportunities stemming from both areas. So you're correct that, and consequently, the innovation is going to occur from within, from a lot of these big water treatment facilitators, um, at least regarding centralized water treatment systems. Mm -hmm. So aging infrastructure and water scarcity are going to demand a total new approach to conservation going forward. So just as an example, in Europe and in the U.S., the same sewage systems collect residential and commercial wastewater, runoff rainwater, and even melted snow. But other countries, by contrast, like especially in Asia, are collecting different grades of water separately and consequently mm -hmm. can redirect these lower grades for other water uses, things like um, watering lawns and things mm -hmm. like that. So... This approach is much more efficient, both financially and from an energy usage standpoint. So there are some really exciting things that are going on on um, an international level. Like even in Hong Kong, their water department is developing systems to use seawater mm -hmm. in toilets, right? And this is where growth is really exploding in Asia in water treatment and infrastructure systems. Like there's a huge amount of capital, especially in areas like China and India that are getting directed towards the construction of new water treatment facilities. With that being said, in my opinion, there are gonna be big opportunities in decentralized water systems. So okay. as an example, there's a great company in Fluence or called Fluence based in New York that manufactures this containerized eco box. Um, think Tesla Solar for Water. It's affordable and a cost-effective solution to scarce freshwater resources for people in more remote areas that don't have it. So in this specialized and distributed water distribution and collection and processing environment, there are points of entry for disruptors, but they're going to need to have some good political and financial connections, it sounds like. Yeah, I think that that's true. You know, t trillions of dollars are going to be spent on technology, equipment, services, and as a result of that, innovation is exploding. It will continue to explode in the space as we try to address this major, major issues. There are companies already introducing new products, including devices that collect wastewater from sinks to reuse flushing toilets, mm -hmm. technology for collecting and reusing cond um, condensate from air conditioning systems and things like that as well. And the craziest story that I've heard to date is this concept, you've probably heard about this over in the UAE, of building a man-made mountain mm -hmm. to collect what is condensation um, in an area of the world that, that is you know, very, very short on natural and fresh water. So, uh, you know, actually, that makes sense. There's an article in the recent 
this week's uh, edition of Nature about the fact that mountains actually redirect the water flow from the Pacific in the Western United States, and and they collect the water. So makes sense. But let's jump into the companies that we wanted to talk about today, because it's clear there are many, many opportunities for growth, even within replumbing the house, uh, right. not just the infrastructure. So let's talk about Avokwa. Uh, it's Avokwa Water Technologies. They trade about 109 times earning, and they're up 71% over last year in terms of uh, stock value. How, you, when we were talking about this prior to the show, you said the company is in excellent capital position. So how, how are they positioned and where can they go with the money they have? Yeah, so, um, you know, just sort of as a precursor to the discussion about all of these companies, none of them are cheap or very few of them are cheap right now. And they're trading it at higher levels because of, you know, what we've witnessed here, um, here in the U.S. and around the world around water scarcity. Mm -hmm. So for everybody's benefit, um, Avoca offers a wide range of water and wastewater treatment systems and technologies, including emergency water supply solutions. They have operations in the US, Canada, the UK, the Netherlands, and even in Asia. Um, Based on their worldwide operational system, um, they have more than 170 offices, plants, and factories to handle emergency situations with their service teams. This is a company that sometimes gets identified as a new company, but the roots of it go back actually for uh, around 100 years right now. They were originally a part of Siemens Water Technologies and rebranded the company in 2013 under Avocra. So, and then in 2017, they spun out as, uh, as an IPO. Here in the US, they have an operating footprint that gives them the capability to employ their mobile and emergency water supply solutions and services to a wide array of industrial and muni water treatment clients. About 30% of um, the US market is actually, or the treatment market in the US is actually controlled by Avoqua. So they are by no means a small organization and have real scale and scale to grow here as well. I do think that they are going to be a beneficiary of the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. Um, and they have a lot of other great things going on. Just as an example, they transformed recently one of the largest offerings of service deionization um, from a model that relied typically on regular service intervals and equipment purchases to the water one pay per use model in which customers are paying for the quantity and quality of clean water that they need. So, and I think that this is the direction that a number of these organizations are gonna go, which is basically uh, pay as you need or pay as a service. Well, and again, that's specialized water use. So for instance, if you're, if you're making semiconductors, you need ultra pure water. And, and this would be a, one of the ways that you might buy that access to that type of water. Now, why is Evoqua a good uh, bet to continue to deliver the 20% plus earnings uh, per share growth that it has delivered over the past five years? Yeah, Especially so- given the fact that it might be at a premium right now due to the pandemic. Yes, and I think that a, a, a lot of these companies that we're going to talk about are going to continue to trade at a premium because they're great organizations operating in a space that's getting a lot of attention right now, and a lot of people see a lot of growth as a result of that. Based upon you know what we're seeing in their financial statements and latest quarterly results, they have had organic orders increasing into the double digit level of growth, which is super exciting for us. They also have an incredibly strong management team that has delivered time and time again on um, their earnings estimates, at least historically speaking. So we're very excited about the company and we think that they have room to grow from here. So let's turn to um, Watts Water Technology. This one trades under the symbol WTS. Uh, They've They've beaten substantially their estimates all year long. Stocks on a, a huge rise from $120 in April through early November when it reached $212. And the shares are up about 60% year over year. Now that it and a lot of other stocks have fallen back in the past few days, and we're recording on, on uh, December 1st uh, after the market corrected 10%, is this a good time to enter uh, Watts? 
So Watts is an industrial manufacturer of products that manage the flow of uh, fluids. They have historically been a really strong cash gen generator and have demonstrated an incredibly disciplined capital deployment strategy for many, many years now. The company delivered really strong results in Q3 as the economic recovery continued to drive demand despite price increases being realized um, as a result of supply chain disruptions. They've been a very clear beneficiary of the housing boom, and I think should continue hmm. to be a beneficiary as the economic recovery continues from here, as long as we don't get into you know, a protracted slowdown associated with the new virus strain. So um, I think that the U.S. housing market will continue to support above trend growth in single family and multifamily construction, at least for um, another year or so, if not even longer than that. So we are very excited about um, their prospects. I do believe that there is more room here, given the acceleration of adoption of smart water technologies, which is one of the most interesting things about their business. Now, they're also an international player and focus uh, overseas on water conservation and management. Are they sitting on new technology that could be transformative for the business uh, globally? I think generally, I mean, the area that consumers want to focus on is their smart, smart water technology. I think that mm -hmm. this is, especially as we go through additional concerns regarding water scarcity, is something that's going to be mandated, mandated not just here in the U.S., but in Europe as well. So, um, and it won't be just Watts, but there'll be other players in the space that take advantage of that. You know, as as we're talking, it occurs to me that one of the technologies that I did not see any of these companies engaged with in a meaningful way is desalination, which seems to be one of the investments, particularly in the uh, Middle East, that is getting a lot of attention. Is that something that uh, is is oversold in terms of uh, the value of desalination? I don't think that it's oversold. I think that it will be a necessary technology, particularly in areas like the MENA region. Um, it is very expensive. And, um, you know, this is a capital intensive business. And that capital intensity is going to require not just, um, you know, private funding, but a lot of public funding and government support as well. But I think that there are cheaper technologies that we will deploy first here in the U.S., um, as opposed to other areas of the world where they don't really have those types of opportunities. Their baseline is very different than where we are here, at least today in the U.S. Yeah, I, it, my, my take on desalination, too, is that the energy requirements are so great that we're also going to need to see either vast investment in renewables or nuclear fusion come online in order to provide the power necessary to do that. that yes. Okay. Now, let's turn to Middlesex Water Company. So in contrast to Watts, it's an operator of water utilities and mostly in New Jersey and Delaware. It's a 145-year-old company, and it looks pretty expensive at 49 times earnings after going up about 40% or 47% over the course of the last year in value. Why is now a good time to invest in, in, in a water utility management company like Middlesex? Yeah, so um, the way that we look at Middlesex is they're kind of an anchor in any kind of water portfolio. We believe that they should continue to experience positive organic growth by investing in, in projects, products, and services that are really complementing their core water and wastewater um, businesses. So we do believe that they will be able to make additional prudent acquisitions as they have in the past. They've got incredibly strong regulatory relationships. They've got broadly diversified services portfolio. They have a very stable residential um, customer base today. And they also have 49 years of consecutive dividend increases. So that's I'd like bad. to ref refer to them as, uh, yeah, that's not bad. The stalwart in, in um, the wa our water portfolio. So um, they have recently demonstrated really strong results, stable results, which is great. And, um, you know, I think much of their business is highly protected. And um, with that being said, I think it's not going to be one of those companies that um, is a super innovator, but I think that they will continue to plug along making acquisitions that are a nice complement to their business. So the acquisitions is the question I wanted to ask. Uh, it, there are a lot of regulatory relationships built in a region in order to grow, you know, within, say, for instance, New Jersey and, and, and Delaware. Can they grow rapidly if there's a lot of churn in this market? Uh, 
you know, people are going to be looking to sell a lot of assets. People are going to be looking to buy a lot of assets. Will they be able to keep up with the rising cost of acquisitions and scale their operations effectively if they left their their home region? Yeah, so the, the two terms, growing rapidly and regulation, don't necessarily sync with one another. Um, as I had referenced earlier on in the conversation, I think that regulators are going to take a new look about at how we're doing things. And um, I think that like so many other things associated with the water business, this is something that's gonna change over the coming decade because it has to. I think that they are in a position where they can be a prime beneficiary of that, but I don't think that they're gonna get off track from you know having this very disciplined and prudent approach to making acquisitions that are a complement to their existing business. So let's turn to somebody who's growing very rapidly, and that's Heritage Crystal Clean. They're, they trade on the NASDAQ under HCCI, and they have been killing it, beating expectations this, this year by 20% every quarter, at more than 20% every quarter. And its earnings growth is it's phenomenal, 925% year over year, granted from a low uh, base. All of this with just a PE of 16, which makes it look like an undervalued gem. Why is Heritage Crystal Clean um, a good buy right now? I also um, think that it is undervalued right now. Um, I think that their biggest risk is associated with competition, which we can talk a bit about. Um, Mm -hmm. But I do believe that we're going to continue to see an expansion of their business. The backdrop is perfect for them with more industrial companies, more concerned than ever about their carbon footprint and environmental impact. And they are expanding in the Midwest and the West through organic growth at a rapid rate and through also acquisitions and partnerships, which is exciting. They've done a great job, even while expanding in lowering expenses and using cash flows to retire debt. They currently have no long-term interest bearing debt on their books right now. And so that's going to continue to put them in a position to expand and expand rapidly. So, um, you know, they operate in this highly fragmented businesses. um, And so their focus and the work that they do, I think, offer significant opportunities going forward. Just a word about competition. Mm -hmm. Um, Their biggest competitor is Clean Harbor, CLH or Safety Clean, um, which is trading at, I think, 35 times right now. So they are clearly, or CLH, um, which is a company that we also follow, um, is the leader in the space. I think that there's room for uh, Heritage Crystal Clean to to acquire business from CLH. Um, And I think that there is room to hold both companies in your portfolio as well. And, you know, they're interesting because they're, they are very diversified. They go out and they clean up contaminated water, but they also do things like antifreeze recycling. They have an oil industry services business that recycles oil and oil water mixtures. Um, does the fact that they're in the oil business affect uh, New Day's assessment of the company's environmental impact? Um, not so much just because they are on the right side of the oil business and, and organizations that are doing this work around, um, um, around worksite cleanup are going to be critically important. If you think about a corporate organization and their, um, their opportunities control headline risk associated with pollution and, you know, lax, um, systems around cleanup, um, they're all thinking about doing things the right way, which they should be doing. And I think Heritage is going to continue to um, be a primary beneficiary of that mindset going forward with these big industrial companies. Now, the company was upgraded by several analysts over the course of the last month, end of October and early November, and the share price jumped about 10%. But then it all fell back on the the Omicron COVID correction the week of yeah. Thanksgiving. It sounds like this is a great time to really seriously look at this stock. I do think it's a great time. And, you know, I think for um, patient investors, I mean, I think that the company, um, you know, the company's target should be somewhere around 45, given its valuation right now. Okay. Well, let's let's close out on Waters Corporation. Now, that's on the uh, New York Stock Exchange under the symbol WAT. 
it's a great contrast to finish on. It's a multinational. It operates in 35 companies. It's got a leadership position in water and water quality man- measurement. So they tell people whether the water's safe, not just make it safe. It's also going through a correction after losing a lot of momentum in recent years. The stock is off its highs by more than 20%. And it's trading at only about 30 times earnings, still expensive, but not very expensive, with less than half the valuation growth of the industry average. So it looks like a company with real potential, but is it struggling? What should investors be looking for as an indicator of success? Yeah, I'm fascinated by this company. And, um, you know, you think about an organization by the name of Waters Corp. Waters Corp is called Waters Corp, not because they operate in the waters business, but because their founder's last name was Waters. It's a very different company in a water portfolio in that they are actually a diagnostics and research company delivering specialty measurement solutions using ultra high performance liquid chromatography. Mm-hmm. So what does that have to do with water? So wastewater reuse is an essential component of the global water supply today. Water, of course, has to be clean and safe to use. Industrial growth, agricultural processes, even municipal waste all pose a threat um, to clean and safe drinking water, right? So they are in, um, there are increasing concerns about the treatment of wastewater, its cleanliness, and the presence of contaminants including including pharmaceuticals and antibiotics. In fact, I know that over the last year, there was some discussion around treatment of waste to identify, you know, COVID-19 remnants. So, you know, I don't like to think about like all of the things that are entering our water supply as as it relates to things like COVID or pharmaceuticals and opioids and things like that. So this is where this is where Waters Corp comes in. So chromatography separates the waste. And if we are going to be more dependent as a community on wastewater, given water scarcity, the core technology of Waters Corp is going to be highly attractive. So the company is offering um, a lot of really interesting technology associated with the identification of um, wastewater contaminants and the removal mm-hmm. of those contaminants as well. So the company is off. I think that um, um, they are in the midst of a turnaround. They've got a new CEO at the helm who's committed to improving operations and reigniting growth. So the other attractive thing about the company is that about 55% of their business is actually recurring business. And they've built some really strong moats around their core technologies, which are going to be difficult for competitors to penetrate. Now, Thinking about the the centralized nature of water measurement uh, at this time, but projecting forward to that distributed water infrastructure we were discussing earlier, is there an opportunity for waters to miniaturize and distribute its water measurement capabilities to support, for instance, tracking the use of reuse of water within the home, like from the sink to the toilet? Is there is there a bigger role for waters as as the provider of standard approaches to measuring water quality? I think as a testing organization, yes. But as a um, as an organization separating out contaminants, I think that's going to be tough to do because this is okay. very very advanced technology. Um, I do think though that um, you know the technology associated with filtering and things like that for home use are going to advance from where they are, but that's going to be pretty different than what Waters is pursuing today. Now, I read in their uh, sustainability report that they're pivoting to using renewable energy. Uh, Do you have insights into how much CO2 they're going to be reducing by transitioning water processing to renewable energy? Um, I don't have a lot of specific data around that, but what I will say is, is that they have a mindset at the organization to become or not to become, but to operate as a sustainable organization. And I think that all organizations need to be behaving in a similar way. Um, you know, their, um, their renewable energy uh, usage is um, going to be really, really important, but not meaningful in the way as it would be with you know, a major manufacturing facility or mm-hmm. um, energy company or somebody like that. Okay, so th- th- they are demonstrating 
thoughtful approaches to how they do things, but that is not necessarily the, the spear tip of a transformation in the industry. Yeah, not certainly not for them as um, a life sciences company, but you know, for every organization, if you think about the introduction of renewables through solar and things like that, it's going to be really important. And every little bit counts, right? So mm-hmm. um, if we could get every organization thinking that same way, it's going to be, it will make a meaningful difference. So I, I wanted to ask just a, an impression uh, that you might have about the fact and this is the apocryphal story that that Michael Burry, the the uh, trader who made the big short bet back in uh, the, the the early two thousands, is now investing heavily in water. Do you see the price of water skyrocketing over the course of the next decade or two? Um, that's a great question. Um, it is a regulated industry. Um, so there will be some caps on pricing. I think that as opposed to water prices skyrocketing, you're going to see massive changes in terms of how it's delivered, how it's measured and monitored and delivered. So, um, I think that, you know, here in California, as an example, energy use is cheaper at certain times of day right. than it is at other times of day. And I think it'll be a very similar circumstance um, associated with water usage. I think that there will be opportunities for home and local collection that haven't existed before. I think, of course, uh, associated with that, you've got to make sure that water that is at least being used for human consumption needs is um is safe to drink, right? So um, I think that per our earlier discussion around different um, gradations of water, you're gonna see big changes in that area as well. So where you're not spending the enormous amount of energy that is needed for full treatment facility to develop clean drinking water, but you're gonna have um, different usage for different types of water going forward. So the price may not, the, the end user's price may not change because of all the additional efficiency we create, but the, the per unit cost of the water may rise. And of course, the U.S. pays a lot less than Europe and most of the world for its water. So we should expect some inflation, uh, which is a new word for many of us uh, in, in this generation. Uh, but it's, it does sound like we have a, a viable path forward to continuing to provide clean water. It's just we still need to put a lot more money into that process. Yeah. And I, I, I think that I do think that prices will rise, um, mm-hmm. but I don't see them given that this is a clearly a regulated environment. I don't see them skyrocketing. Okay. I think that they will skyrocket for people that are, are bad stewards of water. And so mm-hmm. like if somebody isn't cleaning up their facilities in a way or using water prudently, then they're going to pay for excess water usage. Well, and I think that that really characterizes where we are, that we're on the verge of an era of efficiency and responsibility with regard to the environment. And and once again, New Day is thinking about how to invest for that. And I want to thank you for taking the time. It's always a pleasure, Doug. Thank you, Mitch. And this has been a, a really enjoyable conversation. And, you know, water is life. And that's a, a quote from one of our really important partners, Georgie Bedell, that runs a water mm-hmm. foundation. We're doing a lot in this area, not with not just with Georgie, but we do a lot of work for, with Philippe Cousteau and Earth Echo International. So we are very excited to continue to delve into this topic and identify additional organizations that are innovators. Well, I look forward to having you back in a couple of weeks to talk about the next subject. Great. Thank you, Mitch. We've been talking with Doug Heskey. He's the CEO of New Day Impact Investing, and you can learn more about them at newdayimpact.com. And in fact, their freshwater portfolio is at newdayimpact.com slash fresh dash water. So do take a look at what uh, Doug and his team are working on. Folks, take a few minutes every day to think about whether or not your money and your spending is supporting the environmental goals that you have. And uh, we urge you to put your money to work for the things that are right for your priorities. And New Day, as well as the ideas that we share here, are all available to you. We hope that it helps. 
We're going to be back with another innovator interview soon. In the meantime, I'm Mitch Ratcliffe, your host. I uh, always appreciate you spending time with us. And I hope you'll take a few minutes to share this podcast and all the rest of the Earth 911 podcast and Earth 911 with your friends, your family, your pets. We urge you to have a very good green day. Take care of yourself. Take care of one another. And let's all take care of this beautiful planet of ours. We'll be back soon.